Welcome to the MMA Free Fire of the Week. For the first time in a month, all the technical issues have been taken care of, and we are back. I am Matt Salzer. Not only are we back with technical issues solved, but we are back under new ownership. Me specifically. I am not only the senior editor, I am now a partner in the ownership. And I cannot say how much I really do love doing this and how I endured a month during a rather chaotic time in general to try to get this site back up after the technical issue. So we are back and let's get into it. So we are going to play catch up with multiple rounds of Fire of the Week. So for UFC 249, the Fire of the Week goes to Henry Cejudo for UFC Fight Night 171. It goes to Glover Teixeira to Road FC Arc 001. It goes to Dong Hyun Bae to UFC on ESPN 9. It goes to Mackenzie Dern to UFC 250. It goes to Cody Garbrandt and to the most recent fight, which we are going to review right now on UFC on ESPN 10. It goes to Mariah Agapova. So the fight night event itself. The main event was Cynthia Cavallo pulling up an upset against Jessica I. Cavallo going up in weight, and not only that, but she just recently made the transition from Team Alpha Male to American Kickboxing Academy. She moved back home, San Jose is her home, and she was able to move and make the transition, and it proved dividends. Now, we'll just have to see how in the long term this weight class works out for her. It appears to be working out rather well. Jessica I unfortunately not only lost, but also missed weight by a quarter of a pound. That is a very, very minute amount. And to be perfectly honest, I think that she probably should have done was probably take her mask off. That easily could have been a quarter of a pound, but... Unfortunately, not only missed weight, so she had to give up part of her purse, but of course she lost the fight. So that's unfortunately the breaks of life, but congrats to Cavallo, who is in contention for a major upset, unless somehow someone else is able to pull one this month, but we will see, obviously. Then in the Coleman, you had Marvin Vittori, the local Italian rising star, going against Carl Robertson. This fight was put off multiple times, and then on top of that, Robertson was the one who also missed weight by a significant amount. Vittoria went in there, and he got the submission, and it was beautiful. So you had that go on. Then you had Charles Rosa pull a decision against Kevin Aguilar. Andre Feely pull a decision against Charles Jordan. Jordan Espinoza pull off the decision against Mark De La Rosa. Then the fire of the week. Mariah Agapova pull off a submission against Hannah Cyphers in the first round. There were a lot of first round finishes. Then Marab Davishvali was able to continue his rising star status against Gustavo Lopez. Julia Avio in what was one of three under first minute finishes. Pull off TKO against Gina Mazani, Tyson Nam was able to pull off a KO against Zaruk Peshev, and then Christian Aguilera was able to pull off a quick TKO against Anthony Ivey. So this fight card is unique in that it had three under first minute finishes. That is a tied record. We easily could have gotten a record if one more fight had happened and it was a finish, but that's not quite how it worked out. And then in addition, the undercard, let's face it, was more exciting than the main card. That's where most of the fight bonuses went to because there was no fight of the night. Either way, it was a good fight. And then, of course, to continue on, this next weekend, we have UFC on ESPN 11 between Curtis Bladis and Alexander Volkov. Volkov obviously made a name for himself in Bellator years ago. He's transitioned to the UFC. He's kind of been waffling around, occasionally popping up in the top 10, but he's kind of under there right now. He's looking to get back into it with rising star Curtis Bladis. We'll just see how that goes. It's going to be a good fight. It's good, definitely going to be a good fight because these are two athletic heavyweights for the weight class. When you think of heavyweights, you think of just behemoths slugging it out. But these guys are pretty athletic because Volkov is this tall, kind of lankier guy and 
They're also not really big heavyweights either. They aren't cutting weight. They're probably mid-range, 240, 250. So they're pretty athletic. Then in the co-main event, you have Josh Emmett versus Shane Burgos. And these are two guys who are still trying to get a little bit higher in the featherweight division. Josh Emmett at one point was knocking out several different high contenders. He was rising up and then eventually he hit a wall. Burgos is in a similar position right now, though he hasn't had too many setbacks. So we'll see how that one goes. Then you have former title contender Raquel Pennington going against Marion Renal. Renal has been looking to try to get a title shot multiple times over. At times she's had some setbacks. As we know, Pennington did challenge for the title, so we'll see how that goes. Then you have Lyman Good facing off against Bilal Mohammed. This was a matchup like several other matchups, which was set back due to the recent pandemic issue. So we can finally get to see that. And then as a final note in recent news, it's been announced that UFC Fight Island, that fight series is going to take place in the Abu Dhabi based Yaz Island. Now, what happened was they were apparently setting up an exclusive area and this is where the fighters are going to be. That's what Dana White was referring to when he said we we're trying to get the infrastructure set. They're setting up an area where they, the fighters can train, where the fighters can live, where the fights will eventually take place. So it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see how that fight series goes. That, however, is not going to take place next week. That's going to start in July. And the rest of the fights are going to continue at the UFC Apex. It is good to finally have UFC again. And as I said, it's finally good to be back. This is the comeback YouTube video for the channel. I'm going to be looking at possibly doing other stuff on the channel as well. So thank you very much for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Comment down below what you think all is going on. How you think everything is going to turn out some suggestions about videos that we could possibly do on the channel. Be sure to check out both my Twitter and my Instagram at, at Matthew Salzer. At MMA Freakout is our Twitter. Be sure to check out our Facebook page. Be sure to check out MMA-Freak.com for exclusive content. Thank you very much, and I will see you next time.